Hello again. Today I decided that I would like to try doing a rainbow pour over my what I now know is I've been calling my thingy is actually a pad plug and it is pushed into the end of a roll of paper there's one at each end to stop the paper from moving around in its packing box and you can get all different shapes and sizes I was lucky enough to get this one from a Hewlett Packard printer paper roll uh, from a company that I know very well and of course I set it on top of my little cocktail shaker cup and uh, yes I'm enjoying pouring over it so I thought I'd do a uh, colourful rainbow pour from a cup onto this in one hit and see what I can come up with. So I'm starting with purple which is not one of my favourite colours so I'm going to be putting the amounts that I think might be relevant for me. Uh, actually what I might do is use my scale So I've decided to use my scale as I'm still not really comfortable with measuring amounts. Uh, I need approximately six ounces of paint. So I'm going to do approximately an ounce or yeah, probably a little around an ounce of each, maybe a bit less of the colors I don't like quite so much. So I'll start with the purple. that's an ounce of that one and then the blue and that's an ounce of that one I've got a very nice green mix here which has got iridescent added to it. See what that one does. Oh, it's sinking in, so I better twirl it across the top. And that's not quite an ounce, but that will be enough. I'm picking, it could be quite a vibrant colour. Yellow which is, I'll actually take the squirter off the top as I really want it to. It's a very vibrant yellow too, so I want it to not to sink in too much, just to swirl around on it, on the top. I won't put an ounce of the yellow, I will just put around three quarters of an ounce. should do. Okay, and orange, again a vibrant orange. This one has uh, uh, an iridescent in it as well. Because it's a very tall cup, of course, the paint is falling from a long way so I have to actually I'll put a little more I probably should have had a smaller cup I wasn't sure how much paint I was going to be using so I just grabbed the nearest large cup I could find and red This one's just ordinary, good old red with some pouring medium added to it. I'll dribble that around the top. Just a little because this one will be the last colour out so that'll take over. Well, it won't be the last colour. I'm going to put a bit of white as well. 
right in the middle. That will do. So I've now got five and a half ounces of paint. A dot of black in the middle first, I think. I'll give it some cheer. Just a dollop of black down the middle. There we go. That was only 300 mils, or no, sorry, 0.3 of an ounce, whatever. <laughs> okay, and the white. Which I'll try and drizzle across the top as well. Because this white is not vibrant. And by putting it last, I'm not so likely to lose it. It was a very cheap white paint. And I found it tends to sink down under the rest of the paints rather than um, rather than uh, be showing up, uh, you know, really well in the painting. Okay, so that's my paint done. And I will get my board and put it back on. Make sure it's centered. Make sure it's level. I do have a level here. Here we go. Yes, that's good. Okay. All right. So find the approximate center of my canvas and pop my pad plug down on it make a nice little pouring part of my cup and start my pour. Oh, I'm getting grey. I never thought of that, putting black and white together. Never mind. it up. Instead of going round now I'll go across since I'm into the green and the yellow it looks like I'm going to end up with a real mud pour here. Never mind. Now I'll just start pouring fast. Seeing what I can get. I'm holding it up high. Wow those colours are stunning. That is quite amazing. And this time I'm not going to use the Lazy Susan. I'm going to, that should do it. I'm going to uh, just pick it up and move it around uh, and see what I can make from it. But right now I'm going to leave it for a little while just for the paint to pour off and spread out a little uh, and then I will be back to remove my pad plug and little cup. Okay I'm back again, I've got my gloves on. Uh, the paint has spread out quite a bit in that time. Uh, just before I turned my camera back on, I decided to change out the base of my paint panel. I've got a card board type paint panel, which is a Montmartre uh, panel, and I decided to take the Lazy Susan away to stop the temptation of twirling it around. And I've just put it onto some plastic cups to hold it in place. So now I'm going to remove the uh, pad plug carefully, don't want drips, and I'm pop popping it down on a plastic this time to save the drips rather than leaving them. Twist this gently, lift and onto there. Oh, that lifted well. Okay, and now I am going to pick it up and move it around a bit and see what I get. I love the colours. Green and purple together. I've, I've often 
thought how stunning that can look if it's done properly. So I'll go down that way, back to the middle. I want to try and keep the centerpiece as much as I can. I don't think I'll be successful this time. It's more a colour burst that I'm looking for and of course uh, I want to completely cover the board as well which could be a lot harder with trying to keep the pattern as well so I might just have to give up my pattern in favour of uh, yes I will in favour of completely covering the board Those colours, the vibrant blue with the purple and the green are just really exciting me. I'm not so sure, of course, about the orange. It's uh, sort of muddied into the yellow a little and the red. So I'm going to lose my pattern anyway, so I might as well take it down as far as I can. Uh, but I'm definitely going to work with the green and the purple again at some stage because they tend, they seem to be uh, very happy together, making some beautiful patterns. Bring that back down to the middle. And take it across here. Time to bring it down to this corner now. Yes, I'm slowly losing my pattern, but never mind. Now that I've brought it all the way down, I'm glad I, oops, holding on to this can be a real nightmare. Um, I'm glad I used so much paint, I was a bit worried I'd have too much, but it's spreading across the board really well, so I can't complain about that. Take it down across this corner, there we go. Bring it back again, centre it. Try and centre that pattern up. Oh. Holding on to these panels is a bit of a challenge. And take it down to this corner. Oh, definitely losing up on my, out on my pattern now. Use my finger to bring it over. And bring my, oh look, I just love that. That is beautiful. I'm not going to touch it anymore after I bring it back to the centre a little. Just bring it back to the centre slightly and pop it down. Oh, I think that is beautiful. Loving those colours. So I'll just touch up this corner here with my fingers. And give it a torch. I didn't add any uh, dimethicone to this paint, but I um, can see some cells coming up anyway, so I'm just wondering whether maybe one of those paints, when I've used it, I've added dimethicone to one of the paints that I've put in because some of those cells are just lovely and when I've finished doing this I'll take it down so I can show it to you take the camera down okay so I've got my camera down now and I'll just bring it in I'll try and do it as slowly as I can because I don't seem to be able to get it to go onto macro and I don't want it to look too blurry for you but I want you to see an up close of the colours and what I might do is take some still pictures of it to put in at the end of showing you this because on the still pictures I can use the macro and it doesn't go blurry. I'll bring this out 
Thank you very much for joining me today. I'll see you again soon.